Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Heart Talk call. Today is the third Thank day you. of September in the year 2019. I am Sue Ellen Dickinson, and oh, you already know that, but I'm going to be with you <laughs> as your host for the next hour or so. I'm so glad you all are here. Gosh, we got a lot to go over, and um, I want your opinion on some stuff today. You know, we're going to kind of, you know, reverse roles in a little bit of because I, I need I need input from you guys, and we're going to get to that very shortly. Um, but I want to welcome each and every one of you live on the broadcast right now, and also welcome everybody who's listening on the replay. We're so glad that you're here because we have listeners and participants from all over the world, and um, it seems like what we talk about every week really applies to all of us, and I think it'll apply this week too. No exceptions to that rule. But anyway, before we get started, I want to remind you that Heart Talk is so much more than an ordinary call. And the reason for that is because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart. And by golly, I can smell it coming. That's exactly what we're going to do again here today. There's just a lot going on in the world, and we're going to cover it. But anyway, before we do that, I want to remind you also that Heart Talk is brought to you by The Essentials. And The Essentials are an amazing nutritional supplement designed, created, and made for us. MSers by our very own Dr. Rudy Cartwright, who happens to be a very well-renowned neurosurgeon. That's a brain surgeon, in case you don't know. Also an expert in multiple sclerosis. I mean, how much better does it get than that, right? And to have somebody like that in our corner uh, doing things like making things like the essentials for us, come on, doesn't get any better than that, does it? Because these essentials that he has created, Dr. Cartwright has created for us, can help get rid of fatigue, can help stop pain, tingling, and numbness, can help with vision problems and balance, and it can also help clear up that pesky old brain fog that, well, we just love to hate, right? (laughs) Biggest question I get, can I take it with my current medications? The answer is a resounding yes. You can take these essentials, and all of Dr. Cartwright's products, for that matter, with your current um, medications that you're on. And by the way, did I mention they are made up of the finest natural ingredients that you can find right here on Mother Earth? Mm -hmm. That's the case right there. So, yeah, so you've got all natural ingredients um, that you can take with your current medications that are helping people to feel better one less symptom at a time, created by an expert in MS who also happens to be a brain surgeon. Come on, does it get any better than that? I don't think so. So how about giving them a try called The Essentials? How can you get them? Great question. I'm going to be sending you an email as soon as we're done with, of course, the link to the replay in it, like I always do every week. Scroll down in that email about halfway, and you'll see in great big capital letters, Get Dr. Cartwright's Supplements. In that section, you'll see a link. Click on that to the essentials and all his other great products, too. But click on the essentials. Pick yourself up a bottle. What in the world have you got to lose by giving them a try, except maybe a symptom or two? Think about it because these truly are helping people to feel better, one less symptom at a time. They're called the essentials for a reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I take them, and even though I am symptom-free, boy, I tell you what, I don't like going a day without them, because they really do make me feel better. Um, A lot of other people saying the same thing. So there you go. Pick yourself up a bottle of the essentials. Okay. We've got um, a little housekeeping out of the way, and I wanted to tell you about that. I'll remind you again before the program is over to keep keep your eyes peeled for that email. Now, I want to get into um, talking about um, uh, something that Devin Garlett wrote, but you know, I'm 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 in a bit of a quandary. It it ties in with what um, it ties in beautifully, I think, with what we want to talk about today, but maybe in a different way. Maybe I'm looking at it from a different way than you do or you will because stuff is going on in the world. I mean, not to isolate this article or Devin's thinking that he put into this article at all. I don't mean that. But um, 
there's a, there's a bit of a delicate balance here, I think. So what I'm going to do, um, and I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, because I said <laughs> I want your opinion. I really do. But I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to tell you what I think. Okay, because I think that um, so much is unfolding in the world around us. I found myself, after I did this, asking myself, gee, should we be looking at the bigger picture? That was one thought. The other thought was, hmm, how does this tie into the bigger picture? So there are different angles to look at it that I... I think are very important in today's world and what's going on. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Before we do, let me welcome this person. Hi. Welcome to Heart Talk. Tell us who you are and where you're calling from. Good morning. It's Melanie from California. Melanie. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. All right. So with that in mind, let's get started. Um, because I think this is going to lead to a very interesting discussion. So, what is really okay? What does that actually mean, okay? Do we just blindly accept what's happening to us as the new normal? Oh my gosh, I really hate that term, but it's the only thing I could think of. Uh, Or do we just grin and bear it? you know, when stuff happens? Or do we dig in even more and do we continue to fight the good fight against this monster and refuse to let it get the better of us? But can we do that? Do we have a choice? Or does the truth even matter anymore? Well, Devin Garlett to the rescue once again. And he has, as usual, a very striking opinion about this. Um, And he's going to share it with us because I'm going to read it to you from this latest article he wrote entitled, By OK, I Mean Normal. That's the title. So I'm going to let him explain. Let me take a sip of my juice and I'm going to read it to you. Okay, here goes. Here's Devin. By okay, I mean normal. By Devin Garlett. When you live with a chronic illness like multiple sclerosis, you're bound to get the question, hey, how are you doing? More than the average person. You know, often with that tilted head and eyes that seem to be saying, oh, you poor thing. Well, this is a social grace that most people don't really want to hear the real answer. I usually give them the standard, okay, but I've started to think about what I actually mean when I respond like that. By okay, I don't mean I'm actually okay. I definitely don't mean I'm good. What I actually mean is I'm normal. Everything is status quo for me which I suppose I could look at as good, but I don't think they'd consider it good if they actually knew the details. So what do I actually mean when I say I'm okay? And why do I even care if it's simply a social grace? Well, not everybody with MS has the same problems that I do, and many have it worse. My normal everyday life tends to be filled with burning pain, life-sucking fatigue, falls, cognitive issues, and depression. Now, that all sounds terrible, and at times it is. But I'm at this point where I'm very much grown accustomed to this kind of life. This is my new normal that isn't so new anymore you'd be surprised what you can learn to adapt to. Life is no picnic, but it has been and still could be so much worse. So I'm making the best of it. I pretty much stabilized under Tysabri, but years of relapses have left considerable damage to my nervous system. I don't seem to be getting worse, but I'm not getting much better either. Until scientists can actually regrow the myelin around these damaged nerves of mine, I won't ever actually improve. I'm getting older now, too, and I know that that won't happen in my lifetime. Stopping progression is great, 
And if I'd had the option like Tysabri when I was diagnosed, I firmly believe I wouldn't be in my current situation. But it doesn't mean that I feel good. But as I've said, you learn to adapt. So despite everything I've said, I still think I have a pretty good life because I've grown accustomed to and I like to think that I've made the best of what could be considered bad circumstances. <clears throat> so why do I care? Well, everybody asks everybody else how they're doing. Why do I care so much about a simple, meaningless social grace? Because even though I'm okay or rather normal, I'm still plagued by issues. I still don't work. I still spend a lot of time stuck at home. And I desperately want to tell somebody the truth. Yes, everything is status quo for me. But doggone, I remember when my normal was a lot better than this. Even though I've adapted and made the best of my life, I still have times where I want to reach out and grab somebody by the collar and just unload when the, with the issues that I do have. I want to say I'm really not okay. Not like you mean okay. And I want to admit that, yes, I am struggling. And sometimes it feels like every day is a struggle. Every day is a challenge to be surmounted. I know everyone everywhere has problems. Life isn't easy for anyone. And knowing that doesn't make my daily problems feel any better, though. But you know what? Talking is important. Because all of this has made me realize that it's important to talk, to vent, to get it off your chest. I've, I've, I've said before now how I think everybody with MS should have a mental health pr professional to talk to, and that this is a prime example of that. I also have a few friends that I vent to, and I warn them ahead of time, and I don't expect them to solve my issues or even say anything. I simply need to tell somebody that I'm not actually okay, mm. that, yes, I'm normal. Mm -hmm. I have no new or worsening symptoms, but that doesn't mean I'm actually fine. Honestly, that does help, and whether... It, it be my therapist or my friend or getting, uh, getting it off your chest really does help. My point is you can be okay or normal and still need to talk to somebody. And that's okay. So, okay. What do you think about what Devin's got to say about being okay? I think of his line that speaks about um, waiting for the scientist to develop something that will heal his myelin. Mm -hmm. And I think about what someone like you have done through diet. And I think that's not correct. We can do so much without any scientist developing anything. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah, I kind of tripped over that too a little bit because I, I do... Um, I disagree, yeah. And based on my own experience, um, which, by the way, was very difficult. I, wow. But, you know, it can be done. And you're right. You don't have to wait for somebody else to do it. Um, what, what, like I, yeah, like I even think of what Dr. Cartwright is doing with the memory book for us. Right. Like we, we can... We don't have to sit back and wait for anything. You can do it yourself. That's right. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, um, Dr. Cartwright has written a book. It's um, amazing. It's, it's about reading in a different way. I'll, I'll just kind of leave it there. Heather, I know you're participating in that, but um, we don't want to necessarily get into the details of that right now. But it's, it's a way to exercise your brain, which, right, um, yeah, am I, am I remembering this correctly, <laughs> Heather, you know, where you're exercising different parts of your brain, which help improve, um, which sort of has a cascading effect into other parts of the body and bodily functions. So I, I agree. A hundred percent, a thousand percent. We just don't need to sit around and wait for science or scientists to figure it out for us and then tell us, okay, you, you need to go buy that. You need to get your doctor to prescribe that and then you go get it. 
kind of an answer. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Because I think that's really, you know, buying into the party line all the way around. That's just, just my opinion. I think there are other ways. What do you think, Heather? Oh, definitely. I believe that. And even even if it's only helping in a little bit way at first, mm-hmm. a little bit is help. And a little bit is also empowering in the sense that um, if you feel, okay, I reported to Dr. Cartwright a few weeks ago that I could wiggle my toes a little bit, very, Ooh. very slightly. You have to stare at them very hard. <laughs> but talk to them, they right? <laughs> can a little bit, and before they never could. So <sighs> even if it's a little thing like that, it's empowering in the sense that you know that, well, keep doing it. A, you'll probably wiggle them more. And right. B, you're going to then start doing something else you haven't been able to do for a long time. So I find that very empowering, just knowing I can do something now that I couldn't right. use it. That's mm-hmm. right. And I'm so glad you're bringing that up because this was what I was stumbling over in uh, the beginning and in, in the opening in, uh, of, the pro- of the program here because – um, and thank you, because you, you're helping to bring all these loose and crazy thoughts of mine together, Heather. I appreciate that. You know, you're you're crossing T's and dotting I's for me. Um, but yeah, or the way my brain is working today, you know, um, crossing I's and dotting T's. <laughs> Speaking of brain function, right? <laughs> and I'm wiggling my toes. <laughs> but um, yeah, because I'm I'm as I read. Okay, okay. Here's, here's the bottom line. Here's what I'm talking about. I've been dancing around and going around the back of the barn to get through the front door long enough on this. Um, here's, here's where my thought went. I'd, I'd selected this article. Now, don't get me wrong. This is great. This is great. And I hear him. But if I may say so, and Devin and fans of Devin, this is not a critique. It is certainly not a criticism in any way. It is just the way I am perceiving this. Okay? Remember, what do we talk about here? Perception. You know, everything is about perception. Um, or so much is about perception. And Heather, that is where you're, t- where you're going with this because you are talking about increasing your thought pattern, your thought, your field of thought. You are enlarging it, right? With this article, I feel the, the field of thought has shrunk. Forgive me? That's what I think. I think he has a very, very viable point, very valuable point, which is why I kept it, which is why I brought it to the table today. But as the week progressed, right, and as, um, uh, as I was watching the news and the weather forecast, after weather forecast, um, for those of you who don't know um, what we were talking about before I hit the record button and we began talking about um, specifically that Hurricane Dorian that is down on the eastern seaboard of Florida. Um, now, for those who do not know, I am also in Florida, but I am on the northwest um, panhandle. So we're a fur piece from where old Darien is. However, one false move, mm-hmm. and that thing could cross into the Gulf. Yes, they're kind of warning us, not specifically about that, but they're just saying don't take your eyes off. And, you know, they've, it's almost like they're all reading the same script, you'd almost think. But um, just keep your eyes peeled, they're saying. So we are. And having said that, what I have watched unfold over the last few days, particularly the last 48 hours and 24 hours, and I'll know even more today, this afternoon, when I venture forth out into uh, uh, the great northwest Florida here, um, <laughs> is there are vast changes going on. Mm. So, and I, I, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But tying that into what we're talking about today, this had already been selected. I'd already, you know, made my, my little bullet points and, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was getting a little late for me to change it, even if I wanted to. And I thought, well, you know, this is a good article, but how yeah. far does it really go? Because, okay, here's the rub for me. Here's the rub. And I really want to know what you think. Here's the rub for me. The thought field, to me, 
diminished. It shrank. What did it shrink down to and why did it shrink? Not that it's not important. Again, I am not demeaning this. I am not putting it down in any way. Very, very valid points he makes. Very pertinent points. But it is focusing on me, my, my word, minutia. Small stuff. Small stuff. And why do mm-hmm. I say that? Because... And this is kind of, uh, and I'm broadening this out, okay, as I'm describing this to you. Um, uh, So much, we've talked about this, so much in today's world is about me, me, me. Again, not to diminish anything he's saying, not to take it out of context or out of perspective. Very important. But look around us. What do we see? Oh, iPhones, iPads, i this. I that, you know, I, 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 not telling you something? Hmm. Everything is focused on me, Uh right? Right? So I feel it is a natural thing in a way to our cultural and societal environment. We find ourselves living in, trapped in perhaps today. Trapped in. Mm Mm-hmm. That we, yeah, that we uh, are, yeah, good, did you have a thought? Go ahead, go ahead. No, I just thought, I didn't hear you properly. Entrapped oh, I, in crap? No, 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 entrapped in, no. In, in, entrapped in, in, in terms of yeah. society, mm-hmm. societal thinking, um, what we are fed to think, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we are basically, we are, we are told what to think. I mean, just look around you, you know. Wherever you go, there's some kind of advertising, well, or marketing, or whatever they call it these days. But there it is, in your face, do this, we're told what to eat, we're told what to wear, we're, we're told by the advertisers, right, what to, what to think, what to say, what to do, when to go to sleep, when to wake up, what to eat for breakfast, what to buy at the supermarket, what to, what kind of gasoline even to put in our cars or oil to put in the engine? Every facet of life. Think about this. You know, let's broaden our thinking, please, for the sake of this argument, okay? Because we are told everything. So how much room do you think that leaves to think for yourself in the course of any day of your life? Hmm? How much room does that actually give you to think for yourself? Not very much. Amen, sister. <laughs> yeah. I always feel like we have choices, though, other choices, other than what the TV is telling yeah. us or the radio is telling us. Expand, please. Now, by the way, we're having a real discussion. Expand, please. Well, okay. um, they might tell me that... Um, you know, the next great taffy is coming out, and it's the best stuff that you could buy, and it's over and above yeah. any other taffy that you've ever had, and you must go out and buy it. <laughs> well, if you don't like taffy, then you don't need to go out and buy it. Oh, you sure do that. Is that an example of what? Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that we have choices about what what it is that right. we want. And maybe I have made choices based on what I've heard on the television, but I don't know. I, I don't think so. But I'll have to be more wary of that and really think when I before I get something. Right. It's called brainwashing. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, 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 that's really what it is. But you are, and, and what you're saying, you, you are among the precious few. Oh, thank and, you. No, you are. And, and I suspect there are many more precious few of you on this call right now are listening on the replay because, you know, and, 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 and this is really the other um, perspective, avenue of perspective and vision where mm-hmm. I wanted to take it because with the, the dilemmas that we find ourselves in, all right, let's drag this article back up to, uh, back into the spotlight, that um, we, we are forced into, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, you know, maybe we don't like taffy. 
Um, and so it's like, ew, I don't want that taffy. I want, in fact, I don't even like candy, you, you might say to yourself. But um, it, 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 it could be anything. But the, the old saying, water dripping on stone, right? We, and we've all heard it. Um, we used to joke years and years ago that it was, um, you know, it, and, and somebody helped me out here if you remember it better than I do, something about the Chinese um, um, water torture test was when you drip water, you know, and, and I guess this was an old ancient method or something. Uh, I, I don't even know, but we used, I remember years and years ago, you know, that was, you know, the butt end of many jokes was a Chinese water, I mean, was a Chinese water test, you know, water dripping on stone, but it's so true because it is water dripping on stone, literally. Um, or figuratively in this case. And by that, I mean repetition. Number one, on the TV or the radio or the Internet. or what, I mean, how many times um, have you um, seen these ads, let's just say, you mm-hmm. know, for taffy come popping up, you know, on the TV it's, or the radio or the Internet? It is over and over and over. And it is repetition. And what does yeah. repetition do? It feeds your thinking. It draws yeah. your attention. You are forced to look at it. Okay? So... I'm, I'm kind of digressing here, and I don't mean to, because what I'm posing, what I'm, where, where, where I'm going with this, is that so much, and now really think about this, so much that we are force-fed these days is what we're force-fed. We're told so much that our, I believe, our, excuse me, our abilities to think for ourselves, Virginia is the exception in this case, um, that we are, we are, we're trained. We're trained. And therefore, our, many of our abilities atrophy. They shrink. Some out of sight. Now, and, and never to be seen again, I don't know. But you want to go try and dig that up? When you need it the most, like if something happens and you have to start, as they say, thinking outside the box, what box? How do I do that? <laughs> what do you mean thinking? Thinking? What's that? Inside or outside I can't of the even house? Tell it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the box? What box? <laughs> Show me that. I somehow, I somehow don't think the people know how to think. Yeah, and that's where I'm going with this. Thank mm-hmm. you, Debbie. Yeah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Because, um, hang on, I've, uh, hold on, orange juice time. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> yeah, because that'll be the next thing. Stuff Tells you how much juice you could drink even. Yeah, stuff happens, right? Mm-hmm. Life is, I mean, we can be as programmed, and there are lots and lots of people who are programmed. Have you, have, 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 how many of you lately have seen uh, just scoping the Internet or even some of the news, and you've seen the word zombie? Yeah, have you noticed that that's being used oh, more and yes. more? Oh, yes. Yeah. Really? So much. You, uh, you right. know what I have noticed lately? That a lot of these kid channels on YouTube, it always has something to do with creepy things. Yeah. Shadows oh, and everything else. Scared good. the heck out of poor little Hunter. There's, there's, there's mm. a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I hope to goodness that you, you turn that off and don't let his little mm. eyeballs take it any further. But um, well, there's a reason. There's else. a reason for that. Now, okay. let's, let's broaden our horizons even more. <clears throat> okay? It, let's, let's encapsulate the thought first of realizing that this is a societal and um you know i don't know about you you gals up there in canada if you have the problem as much as we do but down here in the states it's huge where you know the the media the mass media the mainstream media really wants to control what you think and how you think in all aspects and they're no, doing it's a everywhere. darn good job yeah I mean, I it's everywhere i i, I think <clears throat> um so having said that if we are called upon by circumstances to exercise our thinking outside the box, <laughs> and we're, we're scrambling around looking for the box, um, do we really have time for stuff like this? Do we really think anymore about stuff like this, about what it means to be okay? What it means to be normal? 
Does that even matter? So I'm going to draw our attention to a much bigger picture as we're starting to talk about at the top of the program here. You know, everybody's going to agree stuff happens. I mean, just, you know, heck, look out your window. You don't have to do any further than that practically <clears throat> these days. And you'll see the changes. And they're just galloping down the road headlong towards us, right, in just about every aspect of life. So, okay, I live in Florida. We know that. Now, luckily for me today, I'm in the northwest uh, part, panhandle of Florida, although we are... V- I mean, you could almost throw a rock and hit the ocean. I'm just, you know, a couple few football field lengths from the, the, the water from here. So, um, you know, I'm not in what you would consider a safe landlocked place. Um, but having said that, there's this hurricane on the opposite side of the state, which is on the Atlantic side, on the eastern seaboard side mm-hmm. of this great state of Florida, which is already doing unspeakable harm. Yeah. to humanity. Yeah. Now, I wrestled with this because, you know, as and, and I'm trying to bring it into clarity here <clears throat> because I already had this article, great article, Devin, you know, um, worthy of, of lengthy discussion, but we're taking it a step further. And, man, we are so far out of the box now. <laughs> There's, there is no box <laughs> because it's a whole different perspective back to that word again back to that word it's a whole different perspective and how does this apply to us well it really does and i'll tell you why because you know we we get more and more information naturally as time goes on about the evacuations now um particularly and of course and by the way i think we have great leadership in in the great state of florida Really do. Um, you know, our governor and his team and just everybody. I mean, it's it's remarkable. Having said that, they the started line? a couple. Yeah, a couple. Yeah, okay, somebody's talking mm-hmm. in the background. Can you hit your mute button, please? Thank you. Um, you know, we've, we've got amazing leadership, and they have just stepped up, and they've already started two or three days ago evacuating the indigent, say, from nursing homes, um, you know, hospitals, um, these, you know, centers where, where people go to live for rehab, and all, just, just all kinds of things, you know, right? And um, so they're getting the people out, um, and that is happening. But you have to say to yourself, ask yourself, if you were to take, you know, this subject that we started out with today to any, any one of these people and say, hey, can we sit down? Can we have a discussion? They would just slam the door in your face or laugh you out of the room, and rightly so, because it's the bigger picture now. It's the real stuff. It's, it's, it's the, the life and death it's the reason we're, we're taken in, you know, as a friend of mine would say, sucking air and taking up space in this, in this world. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm amazing, but it's true. Yeah, um, that's, that's a farmer's perspective, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to you, Stan Irvin. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's, it's true. There are so much bigger things. And we must, we think about things um, in terms of a life and death situation. And it becomes even more pertinent, even more important, does it not? Mm-hmm. When we're dealing with the stuff we're dealing with now. So the subject matter that yours truly chose today, and it's very good, it's very substantive. But does it matter? Really? Does it, does it matter? Does it matter to Heather, who is working so diligently every day on the Dr. Cartwright's new method, which is amazing. And you know what? She can wiggle her toes. Did she do that by turning inward and asking herself, do I feel okay? Is this my new normal? No. She stuck with it. She went after it. She, and she continues to fight the good fight. Hats off to you, dear girl, because you can wiggle your toes. And to any normal person here in this conversation, they'd hang up and laugh. <laughs> would they not? Yeah, they would. 
Yeah, they would. <laughs> to us? They're talking uh, about toe wiggling. I don't get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. It is huge. It's enormous. Mm-hmm. And here we are. But it makes, it really jerked me up short. I don't know how you feel about it. I'm doing all the talking. It, this isn't about me. It's about you. And I want to hear what you think. Um, be, before I open it up wide, because I want to hear what you say, I'm going to give you um, a website if you guys want to know what I'm really talking about. There are pictures this morning, satellite images. Mm. Yeah. Of the Grand Bahama. I suspect these were snapped during the eye wall of the storm or a, as the eye wall moved off mm-hmm. because they're still getting hammered. Grand this, Bahama? The, and they will be. And I, you know what? Um, it's it's going to be a while before this thing moves. I mean, it's the word they're using is stationary, the storm. But yeah. I, I want to I give you this because this is the only place I could find this morning where there are images. But I warn you. Take a Kleenex with you because you're going to need it. Here's the website, and I'll repeat it. HalTurnerRadioShow.com Hal? Turner? Hal Turner Radio. Oh, Hal. H-A-L. H-A-L. Okay. Let me spell it all. Let me spell it all out. H-A-L. T. U R N E R R A D I O show S H O W dot com Hal Turner Radio Show dot com. But again, my disclaimer is take a Kleenex with you. You're going to need it. Take the whole box with you just in case. That's right, Dave. Oh well, God. right now I have a runny nose because, well, I get kind of cold from Hunter. Mm-hmm. So he and I share a cold together. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys feel better. Anyway, I want to yeah, stick on th- this point because it's, it's, it's very, I, I feel it's very pertinent. And it, it snuck up on me. It really did. Mm-hmm. What do you all think? Come on. Bail me out here. Tell me what you think. I think I want to get that memory book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You, you can get it on Kindle, and it's only $15. Really? So it's, not an, it's not very expensive, and it has huge benefits. So, it and it's only $15 does. on Kindle. Yep. When you say Kindle, does that mean you have to have a Kindle unit machine in order to read no, it? No. Well, I believe it might be there on on in a hard copy because Dr. Cartwright sent um, Day and I hard copies, which he yes, autographed he for us. And yes, he did. Then, but then as far as having a Kindle machine, you don't because if you have any if you have any um, type of pad, whether it's a Samsung pad or whether it's an iPad, like any type of machine, you can have a uh, download an app, and then you don't need the machine. You can read it that way. If that well, helps. what I what I did was I went on to Amazon.com and I purchased the ebook. And, well, they just give me a free copy of uh, Kindle. So, well, I already had it. Kindle Reader was on my computer already, so everything was free there. I was like, that was nice. Mm-hmm. That's good. So what do you guys think? What do you, what do you think about the, the topic at hand? What do you think about the difference between little subjects that turn inward, that focus on us, only the I, I, the me, 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 mm-hmm. as opposed to the bigger picture. The big this, picture. Is, this is what I want to hear your, your opinion about. Um, is it important? Is it not important? What do you feel? I feel that, yes, society, they are brainwashing all the kiddos out there. 
to wear this clothes or that clothes, you know, shoes and stuff like that. And he said, you know, oh, the kids are all going to want to have earrings and stuff like that. It's like, I don't think that's a good idea. And it's just basically saying that I'm a slave of the of the Satan out there. And I think that's just wrong. So, so yeah. do you feel that um, that is inhibiting you, all this kind of brainwashing? Um, because it makes, the, the, the brainwashing makes you focus on you. See, mm-hmm. that's the objective, if, if I'm not making that clear. That's the objective, to make it focus on you. So if something bad happens or circumstances change in a large way, um, I'm using, you know, this hurricane as an example, then um, how does that affect you? How does that affect your thinking? You've been trained now to think a certain way. How does Very it affect true. you? Oh, I don't know how it affects me, but... Right, see? I know. Yeah, that's... Maybe you should bit. think about that. Would that uh-huh. be of value to you to give it some thought? Probably would. Yeah. You know, I've been watching it on TV, and um, it's really hard to take your eyes off of it. You know, really hard. Did um, I mention that um, there... Go, go ahead, go ahead. I have a question. Um, I injured my little toe on my left foot. That makes it hard to use my walker. Would that have anything to do with my walkability and so forth? I don't know. That's that's a question uh, okay. I'm, I'm not able to answer. Did I mention that um, one thing that's, you know, really bringing this home, bringing the chickens home to roost on this subject for me, is that we are bringing, they are bringing in, uh, uh, they're flooding in the evacuees from Central and South Florida. It, it, it all, all over, all mm-hmm. over the Florida Panhandle. Sure. Go ahead, Virginia. I interrupted you. No, no. I was just saying it's it's very difficult to be able to, <laughs> to see it on TV, yeah. and you, it's hard not to take your eyes off of it. You know, it's you just you know pray for everybody there that everything's going to be okay. But yeah. man, that is just. I mean, so many people, I think, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that so many people will die as a result of this terrible, terrible storm. Virginia, this is right where I, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's kind of in the interest of time, because I want to hear what you think about this too, this next point I'm going to make. This is really where I'm going with all this, tying all these many, many loose ends together um, that I've created. <laughs> <clears throat> if you are one of the these people, the I, 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 me, 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 let's concentrate on how I feel, people. Mm-hmm. Let's break it down into minute detail, people, about how I feel. Mm. Then what are you going to do when you are called upon to use your critical th- thinking ability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you even know how? Do you remember how to think critically in an emergency, for example? Well, I know how to panic. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, not that, good that, at that. That's a, a knee-jerk reaction, isn't it, <laughs> that everybody's feeling? Yeah, that's not thinking, Virginia. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, how to I'm grab funny. my husband's arm and say, what are we going to do? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I guess, you know, you, you take some time to calm yourself, and I would imagine that I would have to drag myself away from the television. <laughs> Well, if you even had television for much longer, yeah. Oh, yeah, if you even had it. These people who are driving up, you know, um, they can't get a flight out because, you know, all flights have been canceled from that part of the state. But they are driving in their RVs and their cars, uh, you know, however they can can get here. Mm -hmm. These people have 
I mean, they're, they're, they're still focused on the, my, the, 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 the smallness of their thinking. They haven't mm-hmm. thought big in a long time. And I'm not talking to everybody. You know that. I'm are, they, about, are they driving in or are they driving out what, what, of the storm? Well, these Away people from the would, storm. They're evacuating. It's mandatory. Oh, oh okay. It's mandatory. I mean, you can't stay. Where and, are you? What? Where are you? I'm in the northwestern part of the state. I'm in the panhandle. Yeah, but aren't you in that part that's dangerous? No, no, like, not should now. should you be? Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. No. That's way the heck and gone on the other side. Okay. They're on the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean side. I'm on the Gulf, the Gulf of Mexico side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but still, they're coming up. Mandatory means you can't stay. Yeah, and that you means know, that you know the, the police, the National Guard, they will, I'm, and I'm sure mm-hmm. they are today, going door to door. Oh, you can't door, stay. Yeah. You've got to get out. So these people, all of a sudden, they, you know, many, many, many have just been living in their little small world of me, 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 I, I, I. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and they haven't prepared for anything, That's and yet they know that someday it will happen. Yeah, well, someday just happened. Yeah, someday, someday just happened. And yeah. they don't have the extra gas That's right. put away, yeah. you know, so that if they they should need it, and it's likely that they will, mm-hmm. they won't have it. They'll just have what's, you know, a quarter of a tank. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I yeah, understand. It's happening all over, yeah. Yeah. It's happening all over. So my, my, my whole point to this thing is you have over a million people I don't think we even know the number. Oh, I know it, it's way over a million. Um, and that is a very, very densely, that central and south Florida is densely populated, very densely populated mm-hmm. areas, particularly on the coast, the, 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 the eastern side and the western side of the peninsula. And, of course, this is they're evacuating the eastern side. So mm-hmm. um, you've got over a million people mm-hmm. having to go one direction North. Don't they just line up on the highway and just they have no gas or they're waiting for gas and they're oh, not they able have, yeah. or they've run out of gas mm-hmm. and then they just sit, right? Yeah. They have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. I know that the governor right now, um, and this has been going on for days, these um, fuel tankers, you know, mm-hmm. that, that carry the, the gas, yep. they are getting police and state police escorts. Oh, excellent. To make sure they get to their appointed rounds. Oh, that's excellent. Mm-hmm. That they get to That their was forward thinking. Yeah. Yeah, this isn't their first uh, go around. No. That's yeah. what I, well, that's what I was saying about, you know, good leadership in the state. But yeah. How much, as you call it, a good, good, good word, forward thinking is there among the population? You've got a lot of panic. You've yeah, also got yeah. a lot of people who've been through this before. This is not their first rodeo, you know, and I don't mean to make light of it. Um, but they do know what to do and they are prepared. Mm-hmm. So you've got that group, but you've also got another group because people, you know, are coming from all over. They're just uh, moving into the state left and right. It's always been that way. Um, and they don't know. They they turn around? They don't know what to do. Yeah. To put it mildly. Mm hmm. I know. What a mess. So when I see things like this, to me, it's not expanding your thinking, it's contracting Mm -hmm. your thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I don't agree. I agree with everything he said. I think extremely valid points. Don't get me wrong. I never would have brought it to the table today. But uh, the point I'm making is, in a, is because of and in addition to what's happening in real life mm-hmm. and that we're seeing real people in real situations, yeah. that many, 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 many people who have shrunken their thinking that has atrophied to in and around themselves and themselves only, man, they are finding themselves in one heck of a pickle Mm -hmm. because they don't even know how to think or how to look outside the box. Mm -hmm. There we go with the box again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I hope that makes sense. I hope you see how important it is to keep a 
bigger, a larger perspective on things around you. No matter how calm or dull or boring you think your day might be going, Mm -hmm. that you might be having. Oh, yawn, there's nothing new going on. I think I'll take a nap. Fine. But as soon as you're done taking your nap, open your eyes and look around you because there's a lot going on, Mm -hmm. a lot more than you might realize. And it does affect you. And to us, we've got a special problem. And, and I'll spell it for you, M-S, mm-hmm. special problem. Yeah. And it's m- that much more critically important to keep your eyes peeled to and aware, your awareness of what's going on in the world around you because most people don't. Most people don't. And they're the ones, and they're the ones you've got to watch out for too, I'm sorry to say, because when people panic, mm-hmm. well, bad stuff can happen. And, you, yeah. you know. We we uh, we know all about that. Well, I just said it's the Bible being fulfilled. I mean, I know we hate to hear it happen, but it's going to happen. You can't avoid it. You cannot avoid it because this yeah. is God said going to happen. The yeah. last days, perilous times shall come, and perilous means dangerous. I'm sure you all know, and is they're, they're dangerous now. Not just the weather, but the crime and all this other crazy stuff that's right. going on. But it's going to happen. God oh, said yeah. his word will not return unto him void. And I know I've been quiet. I've been sitting back and listening to you all and enjoying what you all are saying. And my phone been ringing like crazy. But anyway, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, and I think it's this un- is... unavoidable. And, uh, well, and, and the point I'm trying to make, and I hope I got it across, Marion, is that we have got to basically retrain our minds to That's right. e- expand You're our right. thinking and take it all in and put we'll it think in. think ahead, proper, yeah. Yeah proper mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. You're right. You all are, all yeah. of you all are right. I agree wholeheartedly on that. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, people that live like Sue Ellen um, near the coast, you know, you're right on the coast almost. Yeah. 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 Been yeah. praying for you all. Been praying for you, Sue Ellen. Been praying Thank for you. everybody. Myself. Thank too. you. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. You're Thank welcome. you. Yeah, and we're going to... Um, move into the prayer portion right now. I think we need to include um, the situation and everybody involved in it. Um, very, very critical situation. Um, but I, I and, and I'm in I'm in full agreement with you, Mary, and I think that, um, you know, this has been prophesied, oh, heck, over 2,000 years ago. It's a long time. Right. You know, <laughs> 2,000 years ago, they, they knew what right. was coming. And here we are. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, it doesn't really make it to me. It doesn't make it any less shocking. But uh, no, it doesn't. Here it doesn't we are for the people that for right. the people that you know don't believe it or have don't haven't read about it. Then right, yeah, right. they're shocked. That's right. That's right. So I think um, what we're going to do is we're going to close out this portion of the program. But before we do, um, move on to. The, our next portion, which is the prayer portion, and I'll explain that in just a minute to those new listeners that we have. Um, does anybody have any closing thoughts on this subject, this subject? Well, thank goodness we're all alive. I pray for all the people on the coast and for what's come and for what's coming for them. I really do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They must feel incredibly helpless. Oh. So yeah. helpless. Yeah. yeah. And anybody who's been through one of those monster storms, this, however, is the example. I was finishing my sentence, uh, would, I was going to say, would know how they feel. We can only know to, to a point. Mm-hmm. You know? And here we've toughed it out through many a nightmare storm, but... I don't think any of us have experienced something like this one. This is mm-hmm. something like the worst storm of its kind in recorded history. And we're going to be seeing more and more statements like that. Mm-hmm. Now, sure. correct me if I'm wrong, but <clears throat> the news up here says that um, it looks like you're not going to get slammed as bad as what I was picturing in my mind. Mm-hmm. on the coast, that it was actually going to lift and go um, towards the Carolinas. Is that right? Yes, but yeah. here's the rub. Here's the rub. 
and I know there are differing um, hurricane models. Mm -hmm. So depending on which one they're talking about. Um, True. You're not supposed to get, we are not supposed to get um, a direct hit, meaning the um, the eye is going to come on and you know do these damages. Oh, that eye! <laughs> but, but it's so huge. The size yeah. of this thing is so gigantic yeah. that even if it's even if it's fifty, sixty, a hundred miles offshore, yeah. it's going to do extraordinary damage. Yeah. For two reasons: number one, the wind. There will mm. be hurricane force winds. Mm-hmm. in certain areas, and the water, mm-hmm. the storm surge. It will, because those winds actually push the ocean water onto land. And depending on where you are, um, depends on how much storm surge you get. Go, go ahead. So where will you be? Oh, I'm, I'm not in this at all. I'm on, clear on the other side of the state. You are? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the Gulf of Mexico. They are on the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. So, all right. If if, if you look at if you look at Florida, okay, um, mm-hmm. and they're probably only showing the peninsula, that long piece of land, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. going yep. north to south. Okay, but yep. if you widen the screen, um, you will see if you're looking straight on to the left, there is um, a strip of land. Let's call it that, mm-hmm. going straight across horizontally. In other words, the peninsula is vertical if you Mm -hmm. will, going north to south. But at the top of the state, Mm -hmm. there is a wide strip of land going horizontally, which is east to west. Right, and that's the panhandle, right? That's called the panhandle, and I'm over to the far right. Okay. I'm sorry, the far left, the far left. And if you can locate Pensacola, which is huge on the map, and most everybody shows Pensacola, I am just a little bit of a jog to the left. Uh, I mean, sorry, to the right, to the east of Pensacola. Mm. So mm. that gives you an idea of where, where we're located. Okay. I always thought you were on the right. No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, that would be over to the Atlantic. That would be the, the, to the Atlantic side, which is where okay. this is all happening. We are over to the left mm. or to the west um, and right on the Gulf of Mexico. And we are actually called the beaches. That's what they call us here. Okay. The, the beach area, the beaches. So. Mm-hmm. All right, any, anybody else? Anyone else before we close out? Uh, this is Sherry. I don't have a comment on this subject, but I just have a comment on the prayer list. I added my uncle, Gerald Ray, uh, a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and praise God, I have some wonderful news, and thank you for your prayers. He had gloom and doom results a few months ago uh, about his cancer. He Mm -hmm. went to the doctor this past week. He is cancer-free. Ah, great God. God. That's truly a blessing. Amazing. Yeah, thank God. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes, it is. Praise God. God you still performs miracles. God still performs oh, yeah. miracles. Yeah. Well, you, you, you know what? This is a great point because, you know, we, we read about the miracles, right, in the Bible. They're all yeah. through the Bible. Mm-hmm. But those same miracles are happening today. They never stop. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's right. We just don't hear about them. Yeah. And why? Because a lot of this brainwashing is going on. We are not thinking outside the box. See? It's how you Mm -hmm. think. But Mm -hmm. this is still there. The miracles are still occurring. They're still there. They are. My pastor's son was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and they said, and he had kidney problems and something else with his um, some other, like three or four different things going on all at the same time and God killed him. That was in 2011. They said he's he's still living. He's still living. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, they That's ended great. up in the Post Tribune newspaper in 2011. I have an article of it. Wow. And, um, yeah, they said they called him a miracle. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the, doctor said, the doctor said if he hadn't performed the, the um, test, then he would have thought it was a mistake. Okay? Wow. Wow. Yeah. He's still working miracles. Oh, yeah. They're still here. And, see, I think what it boils down to is um, everything we've talked about today is how we think. I really, I really do. I think it's how we think, because um, the subject of miracles, for example, 
just doesn't come up in polite conversation. It really, it really doesn't. Yeah. Whereas back in the biblical times, you know, that was all that the whole buzz was about Jesus Christ walking the earth, performing all these miracles. What? Who? Who's Jesus Christ? We we got to go find this guy. You know, I got to talk mm-hmm. to him. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. Not yeah. so much today. It's but here we are. So I think it's extremely mm-hmm. important to have conversations like this because it makes us think about how we think and how mm-hmm. important it is that we basically get our heads on straight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Bible says, whose report will you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. I believe mm-hmm. you still report, re, uh, do miracles. I believe mm-hmm. that. Oh, yeah. In fact, I know oh. that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. We've just heard a couple right mm-hmm. here. So with that, I think we're going to close out our editorial and commentary portion, and we're going to move into the prayer portion appropriately enough. And for those of you who do not know, you may be new to the program, and welcome once again, um, and you may be new to uh, Heart Talk, but if you're unaware or don't know what the prayer portion of it is, that's what it is. It's the prayer portion. And what it is is we're going to read a prayer, we're going to say a prayer, and then we're going to read the names on the prayer list. Now, why do we do this? Great question. We do this because it was no accident that Heart Talk came into existence. It was no accident that we have been allowed, I mean it, allowed to have this program week after week after week for over three years, every Tuesday. A successful program. Thank you. A very successful. (laughs) Thank you. It is no accident that we have been allowed, all of us, to get together. It's no accident that mm-hmm. you're on this call and that you're listening on the replay. And I'm talking to people, too, right, right now, on the ends of the earth, mm-hmm. all over. It's no accident. And so, in return, we need to say thank you. And you hear it on this program. You hear it in the voices. You hear it in the words. And we are going to say thank you to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing this for bringing us together, for allowing this heart talk to happen. Because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart. And this is what we do. And in exchange to say thank you, we say thank you in a big way. So what I'm going to do right now We're going to enter the prayer portion of the call, and we're going to start with a prayer. Um, But before we do, let me ask if there are any new names to go on the prayer list this week. Yes. I have death in a family again. This is the fourth one since June. The Bonds family, B-O-N-D-S, Bonds family. My cousin died. She died um, 24 days after her son. Bonds family? Yes. All right, she's now on the prayer list. Um, is there anyone else? No, she's on, she died. She died. Yeah, well, oh, okay. Well, would would you like? Oh, so you want the the prayer? I'm, I'm sorry, the Bunn's family, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. They are they are on there. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. One second. Okay. Anyone else to go on the prayer list? Okay, all right, let me um, get this ready here. Um, One second. All right, all right, is, would anyone, um, would anyone out there like to offer the closing prayer? Or would you prefer I say it's up to you? Okay, <clears throat> let us now enter the prayer portion of the call. And we begin with the prayer, and then I will need to read the names on the prayer list. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your divine intervention into the lives of so many that need your help. We ask that you answer our fervent prayers to help those who are in need and afflicted with multiple sclerosis and other ailments and diseases that are interfering with their lives and in many cases crippling their lives. 
And as we read these names aloud now, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit will move through these lines of communication that are connecting us all around the world and that the Holy Spirit will carry our voices together with our prayers far into the heavens and that you will hear our prayers and grant comfort to those who ask for your divine intervention in their lives for them and for their families and to grant them healing, restore them to good health and that you will cover them with your blessings and divine presence and protection. We thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. And I will now read the names on the prayer list. Donnell, Linda, Sandra, Erica, Shemang, Dyke in Texas, Carlos in Canada, Janet Carroll, Tish and Luke Roskams in the U.K., Mary Ferris, Jeremy Mann, Julie Perkins, Rashawn Jefferson, Damon Jones, Scotty Williams, Barbara Cleary in the UK, Linda Hawley, Sylvia, Greg Evenson and family, Arthur Marsalis, Veronica Lewis, Tanya Thompson, Kathy Piedrick, Mark, Francine Mankari, Tamala Lewis and family, Michelle, Joe in the UK, Carol in Iowa. Edie in Missouri, Alberta in Kansas, Willem Konacek, Sandra Moen in Canada, Susan, Russ Dizdar and family, Donna and Nathan Leal, Kathleen in Boston, Frankie and Melissa in Boston, Destiny, Tracy Whiting, Clint and Cliff, and Phyllis in Kansas, Jennifer in the UK, Linda Jean, Sherry Gudgeon, Sabrina Sutton, Tracy Thacker, Melanie Monteith, Edie Neal, Sybil Wyndham, Manfred Pauli in Venezuela, Donna and son Andrew, Mubin in Cape Town, South Africa, Rona, Noor, Rami, Ferris, Muhammad, Jill Hahn, Travis and Ellen Thacker, John, Tommy and family, Dennis Walker, Bay, Maria in South Africa, Jennifer, Charlotte Matrisic, Maria in Nevada, Louise in Alabama, Patty in Alabama, Sybil Wyndham, Gloria, Contessa, Mrs. Disney, Ladios, Dr. Paul Hegstrom, Lorraine, Irene, Lydia, Mike Newcomb, Beverly Raza, Jason, Charlene Kelly, Daniel and Faniel in Toronto, Frankie, Robert, Stacy, Judy, Sarah, Ron and Marge, Constance Wadlington, Toretta, Glenda, Larry Nichols, Melanie, Floyd, Amy and Eric Olson, Trudy, Gladys, Gerald Taylor, Diamond, Gregory, Irma, Travis John, Ertis, Demarcus, Anne, Richard Bresen, Helen, Pearl, Irma, Grace, Rebecca, Linda and Joe in the UK, Dan and Jason Junker, Dion, Joshua and Johnny, Kalila, Arali, the Marsh family, Julie Mullins, Grant Anderson family, Chad Cowan, Randy Guerra, Barry Walcott, Tina and CJ, Ray, McKenzie, Deborah, Sally, Joe and family, Gina, Mary in Alaska, Veronica, Karen in Seattle, Michael Freeman, Megan, Trudy, Jeremiah Mask, Guanati in Russia, Jeff Olson, Kelly in Texas, Jennifer in Kansas, Geneva Norris, Latasha Coleman, Seth Thomas, Jim Thomas and family, Tanisha Washington, Cindy, Guillermo, Eula Cooper, Robert Stamford, Robert Alexander, Leo Torres, Chris Elias, Jeff London, Jared and John Chambers and family, Eddie Tiny, Leslie Cavazos, Ryan Cadillo, Aaron Marsh, Jimmy in the UK, Valerie and Hillary Perry, Blanche Collins, Flick Mays, Michael Kuhlman, the Pope family, the Baldonado family, Mary Jo in Fargo, Danielle Duran, Dr. Marty Sanders, Hargrave Crew, Lena Davis family, Sharon in London, Billy Medlock, 
Lola Striggles, Rondella Canita, Dave McCartney and family, Nicole, Shay Standifer and family, Billy Coleman, Rita Nixon, James Grace, Alton Johnson, the Johnson family, Tracy and Alice Daniels, Elias family, Arlen, Kathy and Al Matthews, Deborah Yars de Lorenzo, Chadrick Watson, Kevin Giles, Eric, the Collins family, the Johnson family, Trevia Powell Clark and family, Ray LaBelle, Tony Delcy, Edward McFarland, Seth, Malaya Marnie Horton Fisher, Abe Martinez, Roscoe, Hattie Battle, Alberta and Chuck, Isabel, Enoch Bryant, Sister Wanda Burke, Anthony Canida, Trinity Johnson, Curtis Warren, Susan Trotter, Rhonda Pryor, Wanda Burke, James Washington, Enoch Bryant's family, Aretha McKinney, Lee Pittman, Blessed Hartaban, Andre Giles, Penny, Bonnie, Loretta, Ray Charles, Wayne Jones Jr., Kadisha Cooper, Becky and family, Ashia and Kanisha Morrison, Jeff Olson family, Sybil Morrison family, Trilena Hope, the Gafford family, Emily Aguilar and family, Shaladra Kelly, Anne Downs, Irvin Gudgeon, Latosha Coleman, Jackie Clark, Don Orth, Jason Kirkaby, Marlon Kirkaby, Denise Duby, Miss Stapleton, the Mooney family, and Father, these are the names of the young children who perished in that tragic Chicago apartment fire. Adrian Hernandez, age 14. Ariel Garcia, age 5. Xavier Contreras, age 11. Nathan Contreras, age 11. Cesar Contreras, age 14. Maya Almarez, age 3 months. Lonnie Aiea, age 3. Grelani Aiea, age 5. Giovanni Aiea, age 10. And Victor Mendoza, age 16. Ricky, Narotha, Paula, Netta, the Flores family, Rose Cummins, Val Hayward, the May family, Zefonso Davis, Michelle, Mac, Taylor, Ray, Alan, Willie Alton, Asila Freeman, Johnny Clare Jr., Alicia, Berguano family, Lake of Stamford, Kashari Warren, Christopher Anders, May Thomas, Callie Parson, Lisa Abe, Joe Moore Sr., Joshua Judkin, Rachel, Dylan, Wanda, Gordon Biffle, Demarion Coleman, Mary Cox, Beth, Megan, Zachary, Stephanie and Tevin Giles, Arlene Matthews family, Crawford family, Veronica Enriquez, Dante, Marche, Emerson, Pryor, Leon, Nikki, Roy Collins, Steve Lafever, the Moody family, the Sanders family, Hezekiah, Metty Lisa Hagen, Hagen, Hagenhagen, Jamie Kloss family, Shaney, Susie Walker, Jackie McDonald, Latisha, Joan Rufe, Shawnee, Marie, Michael, Latisha, Elizabeth, Judy Thomas, Belinda Prather, Bailiff family, Buford family, Ray Charles Davis, Arletha Davis, Aretha McKinney, Alberto Martinez, Sheila De Lauder, Marion, the Parker family, Byron, Levi Jester, and family, the Hearn family, Jimmy Sims, Roberta Wehrman, Johnny Ramirez Jr., the Laura Stiles family, Terry Mabin, Roman Nepp, the Hal Turner and family, Alisa Ruth Love, Michela, class of 2019 of the Franklin Public School, Sonia Fitzgerald and family, Patricia Johnson, McNair family, Gerald Ray, Mabin and Jackson family, Thompson and Hall family, Dylan and family, Laranza, Darius, Mr. King, the Hagman family, 
Charlene Kelly, Susie and Dennis Walker, the King family, Brenda, Carrie Gilbert, Ken, Stace, Catherine Perkins, Diane, Brianna, Bob, John, Bob's family. And Father, our urgent and fervent prayers are rising to you at the, as the footstool to heaven, praying for all the peoples of this planet Earth. We need your help desperately now, Lord Father, perhaps more than ever. The storms that are plaguing the planet, that are, 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 are tearing our world apart. We pray for the people beneath the winds of Hurricane Darien. And of course the animals too. We pray for their safety, for their salvation. We pray that you will bring them through. You will deliver them whole again and spare them. We pray for all the peoples and inhabitants of this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, according to what I thought a while ago, Dury is now going northwest. What's that? I don't know. I said that I got, it was on weatherchannel.com a little bit ago on my phone. It looks like Dorian is starting to head northwest. I don't know if that's good, bad, or what. Not good, anyway. A lot of the models are differing. I don't know why. I know. And they have well, all along. And I don't know why. Um, all we can do is just pray. Pray, yeah. pray, pray, pray. Yeah. Never and, cease and uh, pray. Yeah. Never cease because, um, you know, I, 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 I hope that we picked a good topic today, but it's so important, you know, to expand our thinking. And, yes, yeah, take it off of... I mean, our problems are very important. Don't get me wrong, please. I'm not diminishing or demeaning any of that in any way. But it is so important that we see as much of the big picture as we can. Right. Because it's happening in the big picture. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, my thoughts and prayers are with all of you guys. You know that. Amen. I love you. You know that. And none of that will ever change. You know that, too. Yes. But I'm yes. going to let you go. I'm going to leave the line open on your end, okay? So if you want to hang out, that's great. Just stay as long as you want and visit with each other. Um, you know, whatever. I'm going to go work on the replay right now and um, look for that, okay? And um, don't forget your essentials. The link will be in that too. But also um, keep keep everybody um, in South and Central Florida in your prayers. And those coming up here, I, I, I see them and... I can only imagine how they feel having left their home and everything they know and love probably behind, not knowing if it's even going to be there when they get back, you know? Exactly. It's... That's just it. Nothing is going to be the same. It's all going to be different. It never will be the same for them again. No matter what, even if they go back and everything is whole and nothing has been touched, the experience has changed them. Yes, it has. And that's why, you know, I... uh, We've got to keep our eye on the ball, and the real ball in this case is, you know, the Lord and what he has, uh, what, what his word says. Amen. You know. So, okay, I'm going to leave you, but um, again, I'm leaving the lines open for you, you guys, and uh, yeah, we'll keep each other in prayer. All right, so till right. next time, I love you guys. Goodbye. See you again. See you later. All right, see you later. See you. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Is there anybody going to stay on the blood with?